President, Senator from Mexico. Mr. President, uh, I want to speak for just a few moments, a uh, few minutes here uh, about the upcoming uh, confirmation vote on Chairman Bernanke of the Federal Reserve Board. I should begin by stating very clearly that there is no way to to overestimate the severity of the economic downturn that began in this country in 2007. To date, our nation has lost 7.2 million jobs. In my home state of New Mexico, unemployment is now 7.8 percent. That's more than twice the rate that it was at two years ago. Uh, but even at that, it is considerably lower than the unemployment rate in many states, in fact, in a majority of states. American households have lost $12.6 trillion in wealth. More than 5 million American families have seen their homes foreclosed. Many have lost their businesses, and many have lost their farms. In short, there are millions of families across our country who are and have been experiencing severe economic pain and dislocation. And while indicators suggest that the recession has officially ended, our economy is hardly out of the woods. In the face of such pain, <clears throat> it is tempting to grasp for ways to demonstrate disapproval of the economic downturn or to put distance between ourselves as elected officials and the policies uh, involved with the economic downturn. It's tempting, particularly in this political climate, to want to seize on a particular individual to take the brunt of the criticism. And I rise today to urge my colleagues not to use Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke's renomination for any such exercise. Uh, I, I rise to offer my strong support for his reconfirmation. With the benefit of hindsight, it now seems that the Fed might have done more to prevent the economic downturn. Some have pointed to financial institution bailouts and have argued that the Fed should not have provided financial support or guarantees to vulnerable financial institutions. Some have argued that the Fed's support should have been structured differently. And historians with 2020 hindsight will be able to argue those issues for years to come. But hindsight also tells us that without the bold and aggressive actions that Chairman Bernanke in fact took, the outcome of this economic downturn could have been considerably worse. I can imagine no Fed chairman since the Great Depression who has faced such a Herculean task if ever there were praise for averting a disaster, then my, in my view, Chairman Bernanke deserves that praise. He deserves praise for working effectively with other domestic and foreign agencies to ensure the continuity of our global banking system, for taking significant steps to boost banks' as access to funding, and for targeted lending programs to restart the flow of credit in critical markets. It's because of this skillfulness and aptitude that Chairman Bernanke demonstrated uh, that he has had the strong support of President Obama for reconfirmation to his position. Uh, Pres President Obama said uh, the chairman's quote, bold, persistent experimentation has brought our economy back from the brink, end quote. Similarly, in nominating Chairman Bernanke to his first term, President George W. Bush said that he was choosing Chairman Bernanke because of his reputation for intellectual rigor and integrity and the deep respect that he enjoyed in the global financial community. It would be short-sighted for this Congress to second-guess the judgment of our current and our former president in this regard. President Obama's call for the reappointment of Chairman Bernanke is echoed by some of our nation's most distinguished economic thinkers. Our former Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan, Paul Volcker have both said that it would be irresponsible not to extend Chairman Bernanke's term. Douglas Holtz Eakin, the former CBO director who was Senator McCain's chief economic advisor in the 2008 
election campaign. Says, it, quote, it would be a disaster not to confirm Bernanke. Warren Buffett has said that if he could vote for Mr. Bernanke's confirmation, he would twice. As Mr. Buffett explained, quote, we talked about the economic downturn being an economic Pearl Harbor, and he did what should have been done in response to that Pearl Harbor. These respected economic thinkers know that emerging from our nation's deepest and most protracted economic downturn since the Great Depression will require continuity of policy. Financial conditions might now suggest that our economy is in fact turning around, but a complete turnaround will require that families and businesses, investors and financial markets see consistent policy actions. And central to that consistency and that continuity is leadership at the helm of the Federal Reserve Board. If we were to change chairman now, we would add considerable uncertainty <clears throat> to our already fragile business and financial markets and almost certainly trigger a sell-off of the dollar and, and a sell-off of equities. This would ha could have the unfortunate effect of prolonging the economic downturn that we are now experiencing. Finally, while I rise to support Chairman Bernanke's reconfirmation, I also renew my call for policymakers in all positions, ourselves included, to make job creation the centerpiece of any economic recovery agenda. If we, and we in the Congress, must also press forward with the urgent task of reforming our financial regulatory infrastructure whose cracks and holes have been exposed by this recession. Mr. President, our nation faces considerable and urgent challenges. In my view, that's why it is essential that Ben Bernanke be confirmed for another term as chairman of the Federal Reserve Board. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Ohio. 